What's going on people, Two here, and today I'll be talking about blend shapes in Blender, which allows your 3D models to blink, look around, talk, and have facial expressions. This is a key step for VR chat models as well as VTubers, as well as game characters that have dialogue. This is one of the final steps in Blender before actually exporting the avatar over to outside software. And I actually prefer using shape keys over rigging the face for all of these things because VR chat and VTuber models actually have built in integration with shape keys. So it's pretty simple to implement. So if you're new or you mainly create VR chat or VTubing content, then I recommend shape keys for you. Anyways, here's an overview of everything we'll be going over today. Everything will also be timestamp organized in the description so that uh, it's easier for you later. Anyways, as I mentioned, this step happens fairly late into the process. Here we have a character that's already fully modeled, but the meshes are still separate from each other. And that's a good starting point for this video because I'll now teach you step by step. I'm gonna merge everything down in this project and get ready for shape keys and export. So I'll start the merge down process. First, I will merge the entire model into two different objects. Please pay attention to exactly what objects I will merge into these two objects. This is the first object, which I will call external or the outer layer. All of the external stuff, so including the hair and the clothes, and maybe some external body parts like the ears and the tail if you have them, are gonna be in this one object. I'm gonna apply any modifiers that they have on them in order from top to bottom, and then I'm just gonna join them all into one object. The second object that I'll merge everything down into will include everything in the head and the body. So as you can see here, all of these different parts of the eye were different objects at one point, but we've merged them all into this one mesh containing everything on the face, the head, and the body. This also includes the inner mouth parts, the teeth, and the tongue. Because when we create the face shape keys, everything needs to be in one object so that we can edit them all in one shape key. Now this is important. If on your face and body there are subdivision and or solidify modifiers, unlike the first object, do not apply these. We're gonna actually apply these after we make the shape keys. And here's the model after I've joined everything down to two objects. In case you're confused, I'm gonna be toggling these so that you can see exactly what's in each object. And I've renamed both objects so that you know exactly what it contains in the name. And again, for object one, modifiers are applied. For object two, modifiers are not applied. Now, before we move on to the actual process, we need two plugins. I know there's a lot of prerequisites, but these are actually necessary. These two plugins are one SK Keeper and two Cats. SK Keeper allows us to apply modifiers even after shape keys are made. That's something that you actually normally can't do. And what the Cats plugin does is it generates mouth visings for us, which I'll explain more later. I will leave links to these plugins in the description, but they install the same way as any other plugin. I assume you already know how to install plugins in Blender. Before we move on, it's also a good idea to apply all transforms on these two objects. And hopefully when you do this, nothing changes visually. It's also a good idea to save your file as a new version since you're joining stuff and applying modifiers. This is very hard to reverse, so make a backup copy. Also, side note, I know I haven't made an instructional video on how to do the teeth and tongue yet, but as you can see, they're very simple shapes. They're basically just curved rectangles with subdivision applied to them, and the top and bottom teeth are duplicate. These tongue and teeth meshes are modeled separately, then of course you join them to the face object, and you just stick them inside. So let's move on to the shape keys. Shape keys are a basic way to create deforms in our character and kind of a way to animate things like our eye and mouth movements without having to rig the face. Instead of rigging, we create these deforms using edit mode and sculpt mode. The shape key menu is found in this green tab. I'll start adding shape keys to this object by pressing the plus button on the upper right of shape keys. It will create a basis for us, which is the default position for your object. These next three shape keys I've named A, O, and Ch are Vizim shape keys. I'll explain those later. I will also create one for blinking and two more for different expressions. Anyways, I'll mainly focus on the core shape keys here, the A, O, Ch, the Vizim shape keys, as well as the blink. Starting with A, let's turn this value up to one and I will start editing what A looks like over here in edit mode. So basically when you make the sound A, what does your mouth look like? 
And that's the same for every visim in case you're lost. Just say the visim's name out loud and look at your mouth shape when you do that. That's the shape that you're going for. Anyways, I've created a vertex group for my top lip vertices. This is not a necessary step, but it will help and save a lot of time as I can just easily select the top and bottom vertices of the lip with just the click of a single button. So I'm gonna do this for the bottom lip vertices as well, so that when I create the other visemes, I can just click these vertex groups and easily pull them up or down. I'll eventually want to go to sculpt mode to finish this, but there are a few prerequisites. Over in your modifiers, I'll turn on this on cage, this triangle symbol thing, and this allows the shape keys to persist in sculpt mode so that I can freely edit them in sculpt mode. Opening the lips in edit mode is also a prerequisite so that the sculpting can go a lot easier, and also turning on the symmetry, mirror Y, so that I can edit both sides at the same time. Here I'm just using the default grab tool, pushing this bottom lip to align with the face and opening up the mouth a little and also pulling down the chin a little. Because naturally when you say ah, your bottom lip moves, but also the bottom part of your face, of course. Then I select one vertice on the bottom teeth, control L to select everything that's linked. And that's how I easily move the teeth and tongue into place. Your teeth obviously are not together when you say ah. And there you go, the ah shape key is pretty much done. I'm just gonna fine tune the position of the upper teeth here. Now to move on, I'll change the ah value to zero and move on to the next shape key O by changing its value to one. I'll use the top lip and bottom lip vertex groups to easily separate the bottom and top lip, preparing it for further editing in uh, sculpt mode. We also do a little more pre-prep here by uh, changing the angle of the teeth and the lips and the tongue. Now we head over to sculpt mode to try to get this mouth into an O sounding shape. There's a small visual error here on the lip texture and we're quickly gonna fix that. And it messed up the inside of the mouth texture, but I'm gonna go fix that later. I actually didn't catch it when I did it here. Anyways, when your mouth makes O sounds, your lips turn into this circular shape and also becomes narrower. So that's what we're gonna try to go for here. And we're gonna make sure it looks good from the side as well. The upper lip was a little too inward, so we just pushed it out a bit. And that is our ah and our O. Oh. The teeth are also kind of not visible when you're doing an O visine. Next, we're gonna move on to the CH visine. So same process, I turn all the other shape keys to zero and increase the CH shape keys value to one. Then like the other ones, I'm gonna quickly select the top and bottom lip using vertex groups and separate them. I just quickly uh, Google image search CH visine to make sure that I'm getting it right. And it's pretty simple, your teeth have to come together to make the CH sound and your lips pucker out a bit. So let's recreate that by having the teeth close together and positioning the lips as such. And later, using the CATS plugin, we can take these three visemes and the plugin will generate every other viseme for every other sound that your mouth makes. Here I fixed a small texture error in the mouth box and then checked every viseme. Uh, I went back and exaggerated the O viseme a little bit more by making it more narrow. Once these are done, I will move on to the blink visine. So change ch to zero, change blink to one. And there's a few things we must do in order to simulate a blink. All the eye parts will pretty much be moved here. And I'll start with the eyelashes, where I'll take the sculpt mode, move them down a bit, and move them into this closed position. Making sure that symmetry is also moving the other one on the other side at the same time. Next, I'll select all of the vertices surrounding the eye socket. So a quick Alt plus left click on one of these edges on the eye socket will select the entire circle around the eye socket. Then I'll press S and Z to scale everything along the Z axis. And I'm just going to scale it all the way down to close them shut. The iris and the little eye shine need to be moved back so they're not clipping. So I just move them back until they're out of view. And next I'll just have to adjust these lines. So there was one line at the bottom of the eye, which now I have to align with the eye and also the ones on top, I will scale them a little bit down. Move them down a little along with the eyebrows, I'll also move them down just a little bit. And after that, I just work on a couple of different expression shape keys. But as I said, I won't go over these too much. It's at this point of the process where I use the CATS plugin as well as the SK Keep plugin. The first one will be SK Keep, which will allow me to apply subdivision and solidify. So with the face object selected, I go to object menu, Apply chosen modifiers and select subdivision and solidify, but not armature. You will never apply the armature modifier. 
And yes, this is necessary to have this plugin because if you try to apply modifiers while you have shape keys, Blender will just tell you, oh, you can't do that. And you might be wondering, why don't I just make the shape keys as the last step? This is why, because when the subdivision and solidify are applied, there are like millions more vertices that you have to work with. Well, not literally, but it will be practically impossible to make shape keys with that many vertices. Moving on, we'll use the cats plugin. If properly installed, you will see a cats tab along your sidebar. So under the cats plugin, under the visemes menu, I'll select my face mesh. And as you can see, there's three slots for your visem A, O, and CH in that order. And once you press this magic button called create visemes, it will generate literally every other visem mouth shape that you need. And they'll show up in your shape keys menu as vrc.v underscore visem name. And that's pretty much it for the basic shape keys. Now our shape keys are done and all of the modifiers are applied on both of our objects. Now our entire character can be one object once we join those two mesh objects. Now rigging, I will go over in another video because that's a whole video on its own. Watch out for that later this week. I'll even show you how to rig the clothes automatically after you've rigged the body, as well as what to do for stuff like the hair, as well as jiggle physics. For the sake of this video, let's just pretend we already rigged everything. But if you look in my scene hierarchy here, I only have one mesh object, which contains all of the meshes of this avatar, and it's parented under one armature. And the mesh object only has one modifier, armature modifier. Every other modifier was already applied in our process. If any one of these conditions are not met, then once you export to, let's say, Unity, you'll notice that there will be no blend shape functionality. Like you made all of those shape keys for nothing. So make sure that you meet all of these requirements. Anyways, this entire video would be pretty much pointless if I didn't export it into at least one thing. So let's do file export as FBX. And today I'll just show you a very condensed export to Unity as a VRM file which will make it usable for VTubing. This is gonna be very quick and I will do different versions of exports in different videos later. But for now, let's just do a quick Unity one. So let's just export that FBX and assuming you already have Unity, you can Google UniVRM, click their GitHub link, scroll down under Unity package under installation, click latest release, scroll down to under 0.x and download that UniVRM Unity package. You can then drag and drop this into Unity into any 3D scene. Go ahead and press import. And just like that, the VRM0 dropdown will be available now in your dropdowns. Now let's drag and drop that FBX we exported into our scene. And as you can see, it's all gray. Let's click on that base FBX file in our assets, go over to rig, change generic to humanoid and press apply, then configure. Usually it auto fills in all the bones pretty well. I don't have a left and right eye bone though. It thinks the ears are eye bones, so I'm just gonna remove those. But the body and hand bones are all correct. Once you've confirmed those, you can press done at the bottom right and apply. Now to fix this gray model, we can now head over to materials and get that sorted out. As you can see, it does have materials, but they're all blank. So let's press extract materials. And all that will really do is take these six materials out so that we can configure them. Now let's convert all of these into tune shaders since this is an anime character. The VRM comes with an M tune shader, which is a pretty decent tune shader. So I change all of these into M tune and change their lit color into white. Although I should probably do that for the shade color too. This was just a quick example, so I didn't bother. But if your model already has baked shadows, you don't want additional shadows on top of that. So you don't want the shade color. Once everything is now a tune shader, I'm just gonna go grab my image textures. They're already in this file. So I'm just gonna lazily copy and paste them into this folder. And you'll just take these image textures and drag and drop them into the corresponding lit color alpha squares as you can see here. As for the material name outline, they're just solid colors, so a solid gray and a solid black. Down the road, I'll teach you how to create different kinds of materials. Let's make her face the same way as this blue Z axis, because that's needed for the VRM0 export. Now go to VRM0 dropdown, export to VRM0.x, fill in these red boxes with literally anything. And our character is already t so we don't have to do anything else. Let's save this VRM to the desktop, like the organized gentleman we are. Now we can hide or delete this first iteration. We will take that VRM file we just exported and import it back in. 
but this time when it's imported, it will already have all of the textures on the materials. It takes a few seconds to load in, but it's there. It has the same name as the old one, but this time it has colors, so that's how you can differentiate it. And you'll notice it has scripts attached. The most relevant to this video is this blend shape proxy script, which you can double click the blend shape avatar here. And this is where we assign the shape keys we made in Blender to these blend shape clips. So here we clicked on A, so we drag the A visime all the way to 100. For I, I drag IH to 100. For U, I drag OU to 100. And you notice there are more shape keys than actual blend shapes you can assign them to. If we were exporting to VRChat, then we would need all of these. But just go ahead and fill in AEIOU and also Blink. I also have two mini expressions here, which are Joy and Shock. Joy is actually a default expression, but if you've created expressions that uh, don't exist, you can just click Create Blend Shape Clip. And once you're done with the blend shapes, you can just click the root object, which in this case it's F41, and then you do the VRM0 export to VRM0.x thing again. And of course, this will export a .VRM file, which I'm going to open in a program called VC Face, which is a program made for VTubing. And it looks like the mouth and eye shape keys are working as well as the expressions. Again, I forgot to turn off the material shadows, so there's some weird double shadows going on, but whatever. There are lots of other VRM features that I want to go over later too, but this video has taken long enough already to edit, so I'm gonna have to cut it short here. Hopefully you still learned something. Please support the video if it helped you in some way. And good news, this channel has finally been partnered, so thank you guys for your support. And that does mean I'll be trying to upload more regularly, and so, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.